Another modern day Celtic great left the club yesterday. Around about tea time, Celtic confirmed the news that Hatim Abd El Hamed had sealed his move back to his homeland, Israel, back to the side we signed him from, Hapoel Beersheva, signing a permanent deal with them. In the two years in Scotland, he started a grand total of seven league games for Celtic. Seven. The last four matches that he played for the club, we lost every one of them. So it was a pretty bad end for him at the club after he showed initial promise. But he's just one of a number of players who have left Celtic over the last couple of weeks that from the outside looking in, it seemed like they couldn't get away quick enough. Olivier and Cham, Jeremy Frimpong, both moved, both seemingly wanted another opportunity and couldn't jump quick enough at the opportunity to get that. So what is what is wrong at Celtic with regards to players being unhappy? And what is wrong with players being signed from far-flung countries and not necessarily settling to life at Celtic and in Scotland in general? Is this a COVID problem? Can COVID be blamed for the ills of this? We kind of blame COVID for everything else, really. Or is this a more complex issue than that? Do Celtic have a role to play? Are we signing the wrong players? Are we not integrating these players enough into our setup? Well, we're going to investigate all this on today's video. We're going to be hearing a wee bit from Neil Lennon in this video. Not quite literally, but we're going to have some quotes uh, from him that he's been given, mainly to BBC Sports Sound over the last weeks and months. We're starting with these ones he made about Hatim El Hamed the weekend just prior um, to his move to Apple Besheva being confirmed. So Neil Lennon said he's really struggled with life here. His wife and young son are back in Israel and he's been through a really rough time of it mentally rather than anything else. People will look at El Hamed and say... He's been paid X amount a week. He should be able to adapt to life anywhere. There's no substance to that at all. I personally would not like to live in Israel at the moment in pretty much a, a strict lockdown, being thousands of miles away from my family. So I can't imagine it was easy for El Hamed. So I've got a great deal of sympathy for El Hamed. But the facts are that it's another signing that hasn't worked out for Celtic and this is a pretty common theme. Was El Hamed happy at Celtic prior to COVID becoming a thing? He certainly seemed happier, but unless you were in his close family and friends circle, you won't know the truth there. However, Lennon's also been chatting recently about Olivier and Cham. He said it's not the club that he and Cham is unhappy with. I think it's just his life in Glasgow. This time last year, he was absolutely superb between January and March. Between then and the lockdown, something got disconnected with Olivier. He couldn't get that desire or passion back to play. And it's not as if Lennon is just making these comments after the players have departed the club. He said similar things about a player who's currently in the first team squad, not in the first team Vasilis Barkas, he said, sometimes you take it for granted that these guys are going to come in and adapt straight away. Some take a bit longer and he is in that category. Lennon has also revealed that he's been to Shane Duffy's house. He said outside, he didn't go indoors to help him through a tough period. And from the outside looking in, it looks like Diego Laxalt and Albina Yeti haven't exactly hit the ground running or adapted to life at Celtic since they came into the club in the summer. So it seems like there's a common problem here, but Celtic can't blame COVID for everything here. And there's a few reasons for that. The first one is that this unhappiness and failure of signings to be integrated into our setup has been going on for a good few years now, and it's been happening prior to COVID and face masks and social distancing, prior to all those words becoming part of our everyday lives, Celtic have been struggling with this issue of not getting players integrated. Take Marion Shved as a perfect example. There's been a similar story with Vacuum Bio and even with Bolly Bolingoli prior to COVID. So it's clear there's a, a real theme forming here, even prior to coronavirus.
It was hardly a massive surprise that the likes of El Hamed and Shved haven't been successes in Scotland. Both of those players had previous moves in their career where they'd left their homeland and it hadn't worked out. They were homesick, they didn't play any games. So are we signing the wrong players? Should we be looking more into players' personalities and their personal life? when signing them rather than just, are they a good player? It was pretty clear from the outset that Shved wasn't going to be a success in Scotland and there were certainly doubts about that. I remember at the time there was doubts about the spell he had in Spain with Sevilla and I think there was really similar doubts about El Hamed, the fact that he had rarely played when in Belgium, I think with Ghent or Genk, one of those two. Uh, there was real concerns there and El Hamid came on to a game in his early months, but those concerns never really went away. Is there enough been done about the happiness of these players when they come to Celtic? I'm drawn to some comments made by the aforementioned Vacuum Bio about Colo Turi, his compatriot. They're both from the Ivory Coast. Colo Turi was at the club when Bio signed for Celtic and Bio had some lovely things to say about Colo Turi. I want once again to say a big thank you to Colo because I'm in Scotland because of him. I admit that I was pleasantly surprised by the reception that was reserved for me. Everyone was there for me. It is a memory that will long be engraved in my mind. Colo Turi was really highly rated and liked by a lot of the Celtic first team squad. I don't think that's any secret. Have Celtic replaced that kind of character since Colo Turi joined Brendan Rodgers and Chris Davies and others down at Leicester? Is his equivalent nowadays Gavin Strachan? Possibly, I think so. Is Gavin Strachan going to be the same figure to these players that Colo Turi was? I think it's a discussion that we really need to have, whether there's an opportunity or a person that players who are struggling to adapt to life in Scotland could go and speak to. I don't know right now who the likes of Incham or El Hamed would speak to? Would it be the captain Scott Brown? Would it be Neil Lennon? Would it be Peter Lowell? Would it be John Kennedy? I, I really don't know and I don't want to speculate as to that but once again looking from the outside it's clear that there is something wrong here at Celtic in the way that we are recruiting players from far-flung countries. It's a key part of our recruitment strategy to pluck players from Slovakia, from Ukraine, from Poland. So it seems inconceivable for me that Celtic wouldn't have a better network of experts and people in positions that could help these players integrate into life in Scotland because it's clear that nowhere near enough has been done at the moment. Yes, COVID has certainly escalated things and, and made it even tougher for these players to adapt to life in Scotland. But there's other clubs in Scotland that seem to be doing a lot better at it than us. There's other clubs in England that seem to be doing a lot better at it than us. And we weren't doing really well at it prior to covid Yes, there was some successes, players like Christopher Julian, but the vast majority, the likes of Klamala, the likes of Sorrow before he got into the first team, there was no plan there to get them integrated into the Celtic first team. There was no long-term plan there. Brendan Rodgers' recruitment was far from ideal in his time at the club, and I'm not going to rewrite history with that one. He signed a lot of duds. He signed a lot of players that didn't work out, just like a lot of Lennon signings haven't worked out. But you could always see some sort of a plan with Brendan Rodgers signings, whether it be immediate stopgap signings like Colo Turi or whether it be players who could add that bit of glitz and glamour to Celtic, first team, Dembele, Sinclair, players like that. Odson Edward was a Brendan Rodgers signing and Odson Edward was so clearly the successor to Moussa Dembele. He was signed on loan originally, then we signed him. You could see the plan there and then when Dembele left, quite surprisingly, Odson Edward was there to step into his shoes. What is the plan with taking a random player, Patrick Clamalla, for example, in this current Celtic squad? What is the plan with Patrick Clamalla from signing him to getting him to be where he wants to be or where we want him to be as a Celtic first team regular? Was the plan to loan Patrick Clamalla out this season to another Scottish team, get him up to speed in the Scottish game with a view to being a starter for us next season. The plan clearly wasn't that. From the outside looking in, the plan looks like it was 
We'll play Clamalla now and again. We'll give him 10 minutes every couple of games when we're winning. And then we'll just chuck him in to a derby match out of the blue. Now, I know we had injury problems there, but that kind of adds to my point. You're going to have injury issues. You need to have players ready to step into the fold. Clamalla is just one example. You can take Barkas as well. What was the plan with Vasilis Barkas? He was in the team, then he was dropped, then he was back in the team, then he was dropped again with the manager putting him right under the wheels of a bus. And then you've got Albion Ayeti. Why is he suddenly starting games now when six weeks ago Lee Griffiths was starting games? It just seems like there is no long-term plan there. It seems like every decision being made in the first team is short-term by Neil Lennon because he's trying to save his job. And in a way, you can't blame Neil Lennon for wanting to save his job. That's what he's going to do. But that's why Celtic need a director of football in who can put a long-term strategy into place he can look at signings and he can go right that's where they're at now that's where we want to get them to how do we make up that difference that's what other clubs do you can see clearly what other clubs the signings they make and what they want their players to do with Celtic it just seems so so scattergun and that's something that Dominic Mackay really has to sort when he comes into the club. He's got a lot to sort. Recruitment's a major issue. The scouting of players that falls into this is a major issue. Youth development, the disconnect between the club support and the board and the players, the managing situation. There's so much he needs to sort. But another major issue for me is the happiness of players and in integrating new Celtic signings into the so-called Celtic way. What is the Celtic way anymore? What is expected of players? What can we offer players and what can players offer us? It's a fascinating issue and it's something that he really needs to sort when he comes to the club.